I just wanted to mention, uh, and I was wondering if you're aware of the fact that we have, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we have troops in uh, 130 foreign countries. I think that's rather astounding. You know, what are they doing there? Well, if they're keeping the peace, you know, that's probably pretty good. Um, what is it costing? And are we paying for all of that, or are those countries paying for part of that cost of having our people in all those countries? I heard that from two different sources, and one of them was a congressman, so I thought, well, you know, this is probably, probably true then. We got troops in 130 foreign countries, and I thought, well, for young people, uh, I'm wondering uh, whether they're gonna, maybe they can't find a job, jobs aren't so easy to get, uh, join the military. You know, it's something to think about. Give it, give it a thought. You could join Army, Navy, Air Force, you know, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard, and what all is there. And then you could, uh, you get free room and board and uh, medical care. And, you know, you could you get a little pay, a little money to spend. Maybe not not an awful lot, but you, it's something. And all your living is paid for. That's the main thing. And then uh, after uh, twenty years, you can retire and get a pension for the rest of your life. Right? I know a guy who's got a son and uh, he says he's got a son in, in the Marines and uh, it's a good deal, you know, supposedly he's going all over and he's had a lot of fun meeting a lot of different women and all this. He says, yeah, right now he's banging away in Bangkok. I, t I, t I said, that sounds like a welfare system to me. He says, yeah. Well, you know, it's like he he agrees with me. It's a it's a welfare deal. I don't know, it doesn't sound very good, but you know, if you can't find a job and on the civilian market, maybe it's a good idea to go into the service if you don't mind that. I would never do that because I don't like being in the military. I was in there for a little while during World War II, and I I, I never liked it. I, I wasn't in law. I was. Law, I was never out of the state, so I was never in, you know, any combat, uh, any any uh, combat, I should say. But uh, I didn't like it anyway. I got in late. That's why uh, I didn't get into any of the war activity. The war. The war ended about a month after I, I was drafted into the service. So they just kind of kept me around to, you know, to, I, it, I went from here to there for a while. I worked in a chow hall. You know, I never had hard work to do. I was on shore patrol in the Great Lakes for a while. Uh, you have that big SP on your shoulder, you know, you stand by the gate. And people come in, they want to come in the gate, the guys would come along, these officers, you know, and they got to show their pass to come in there. And usually they didn't like that. They were kind of mad. Well, you want to see my pass? I, yeah, I, sorry, sir, I have to see your pass. And they show it to you and say, all right, thank you, sir. And they go in, all right. So I spent a lot of time doing that, and I spent some time out in Davisville, Rhode Island. I was in a chow hall. I was food, handing out food to guys that go through the chow line, and you give them so many potatoes or so many, so much of that delicious, uh, what they call bread pudding. I couldn't stand that stuff. I never had that. I never, I would never eat it. I couldn't stand to look at it. Say nothing to eating it. But, uh, no, I couldn't do that, go into the service as a, 
you know, a way of living, you know. I've been an uh, electrical engineering type of guy and worked for a few big companies, uh, mostly paperwork type of jobs, not, not a lot of them. I, when I think of all the complicated stuff I had to learn, I never really used an awful lot of it on the job. You know, it's more or less paperwork, you know. Or you do it. I, I worked in a test department for a while, tested some stuff. And then I'd read a report on that test and hand that in to the guy who wanted the test done in this, in, uh, in this big company. But it wasn't a bad job. Um, well, bad job to contract engineering. I worked at different companies because I liked a lot of variety. That's why I did that. But trouble is, you don't build up a, a pension when you do that. Usually you have to be with a company for at least five years to have a pension. And uh, I never really, I never did that. So. And you, you don't wind up. I didn't know much about that. That's something really to look into. When you work for a company, find out how long you have to work there before you can uh, retire. You know. Well, anyway, try that. If you can't get a job, you you go out and uh, join the military, and maybe you can go to some nice country like in Germany or France or something like that, you might have a lot of fun there, you know. Spend 20 years there and retire and get a pension for the rest of your life. That's just an idea, you know. That's a suggestion. You might want to do that. It doesn't sound like a bad idea for me, although it wouldn't interest me because <laughs> the military life never interested me. But well, that's just the way I am. Maybe you wouldn't mind it. Maybe you'd like it. You could get in there and move up in the ranks, right? Become a become a captain or something. And uh, you, know, you can you got an income and you got free room and board and free medical care and you know you could call it kind of a welfare system. I don't know. I don't want degraded or anything, you know. But it might be a good idea if you have a tough time finding a job in the civilian market. So I thought I'd just mention that. 130 different countries. Can you imagine that? I, to me, that in itself is rather amazing. Well, okay, give it some thought. And then um, if, you, if you can't find a job in the civilian market, uh, which isn't so hot, I guess, right now, Think about the military. Talk to them. See, maybe you can go to some certain country you like and stay there for 20 years and retire. And get a get a pension. You know, I don't know. Well, that's what I want to tell you about this time. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, goodbye for now.